So, we are now in North Museum, and we have to go through like the regular way in order to get to the planetarium. So we're just going to look around the museum, and at 3.30 we're going to go to the planetarium. I hope you could take pictures in here. So we just entered the planetarium and I'm gonna show you guys what we're seeing. Talks about Saturn's rings. Then we have like a whole big part about the whole solar system. Shows the planets. And then it has the history of Saturn and how it's changed through time. We have the tools not only to observe, but also to explore the open space. You're supposed to be doing this. You're the camera man. Talks about the moons. Saturn versus Earth. Okay, so that's the gist of the planetarium, and we're waiting to go see the show at 3.30. And in the meantime, we're just going to play with some of the facts that they had, and I'll keep you guys posted. Just answer the questions. So... They have like these cute little question booklets and they're going to ask you a question and then it's like you can pick which one and then they show you the answer. So I thought that'd be really cute. So me and my cameraman, we're going to try to figure out some of these answers. Okay. So which of Saturn's moons has a dense atmosphere as well as rivers and pounds of liquid methane on it? Um, which one do you think it is? He thinks it's Titan. I think it's Titan too. So let's see. Yay! It's Titan! Okay, next one. The Kazani is orbiting Saturn. Which other mission explored Saturn? Which one do you think it is? He thinks it's B, Voyager. I think it's Gemini. You want to say? Uh, how do you know these? So the answer is Voyager. Okay, the next one. The Cassani spacecraft is roughly the size of one. What do you think it is? Airplane, table, school bus, or small car? Uh, B. No. A. A. I think it's C. Stand anywhere on the Earth, and space is never more than a mere 100 kilometers away. At this distance, you are beyond Earth's atmosphere, and are officially an astronaut. 100 kilometers, that's less than some people commute to work each day. And yet just 50 years ago, this distance was out of reach. Decades of research and development into spacecraft has allowed us, for the first time in the history of the human race, to leave our planet and explore what is beyond it. Technology has given us the tools to break free of gravity and journey beyond our world. But what about the people involved? What does it take to be part of these incredible journeys? What does it take to become an astronaut?
Before anyone can become an astronaut, years of mental and physical training must be completed. The long process of developing the skills needed begins much closer to the ground, in fact, underwater. This is a neutral buoyancy training tank, a very deep swimming pool filled with underwater versions of spacecraft and robots. Neutral buoyancy is a state where an object neither sinks or floats. Using a combination of weights and flotation devices, the astronauts are suspended in a kind of underwater weightlessness. To replicate the conditions of an actual mission, real space suits are used. Bulky and cumbersome, these suits provide limited mobility and prevent any tactile contact. Getting used to these restrictions allows astronauts to prepare for the complex tasks required in the harsh conditions and microgravity of space. But to truly simulate weightlessness and experience its effects on the human mind and body, we need to head upwards. Star, you know where north is. It's always going to be right over north. So you're facing that north star, north is in front of you, west is on your left, east is on your right, and south is right behind you. So you can use that north star as a compass. Along that same line, come over here to find Cassiopeia the Queen. These five stars. That look like either a W or an M in the sky, but according to Greek mythology, it's supposed to be Cassiopeia the Queen sitting in her throne. So right now she's upside down. Okay. If we follow, go back to this big dipper, and if you look at the, the handle, it sort of curves or makes an arc. So if we follow that arc, an arc. A bright star called Arcturus. Just follow this curve and arc to Arcturus. From Arcturus, we're going to spike down to Spica. Sort of like after a football player makes a touchdown, he spikes it along and slams it into the court. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to spike straight down to a bright star called Spica. Right next to Spica, we're going to see a bright white dot. It's going to look like a really bright white star. But it's not going to be a star. It's actually going to be one of our planets. It's going to be the planet Saturn. Yeah. On the real sky, there is no way for you to tell the difference between a star and a planet unless you know exactly what you're staring at. It's like I said. Our two archers spike down to spike up right next to it. You can see a bright white object. It's going to look like a bright white star, but it's going to be a planet Saturn. You point your telescope at it, you should be able to see its rings. But with just your eyes, it's going to look like a bright white star. If we turn our attention to the east, so we take that north star, put it to our north star, march north, we put this north star onto our left shoulder, so we face the east, behind the east, we can see three bright stars. Those three bright stars 
there will be our summer triangle. And each of those stars is actually part of three separate constellations. But within that summer triangle, you have Lyra the Harp, Aquila the Eagle, and Cygnus the Swan. We take that word star and put it to our back, and we face the south. And the south, we can find a bright red star. A lot of people confuse it for the planet Mars. It is not the planet Mars. It is a star. It's a bright star called Antares. And it's supposed to mark the heart of Scorpius the Scorpion. One of our zodiac signs. And right next to him, you can find a group of stars that sort of looks like a teapot. Heart is actually supposed to be Sagittarius the Archer. So it's a half man, half horse, who once again is one of our zodiac signs. So you go outside tonight, the first thing you want to find is the Big Dipper. Use that Big Dipper to find that North Star in Cassiopeia. Then you need to find Arcturus, Spica. When it's Spica, you'll find Saturn.